Look how happy I am. I'm just sitting on the couch having such a great time. Getting my photo taken. It's it's a great day. Maybe I would be happier if I was on like a tropical beach or something. Well, I can be because this is a computer and we're in Photoshop. So we're just going to select the part of me that we want to transplant to the beach. I'm using the polygon lasso to get a close selection. Not totally removing the background, but getting rid of the stuff we don't need there. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it right in there. Much better. Now we have to get rid of some of this other stuff because, I mean, clearly I want to have this wall while I'm in a tropical, when I'm on a tropical island. But I would take the couch with me, obviously, so. This isn't going to be the most realistic transplant, but bear with me, because it'll be, well, we'll do the best we can with our, our couch vacation here. So now there are a lot of different tools you can use to remove backgrounds in Photoshop, but there's one specifically, which is particularly relevant, and it's hidden behind the eraser tool, and it's called the background eraser tool, oddly enough. And what this thing does is you tell what you don't want, and it will just kind of assume where the edges is. But you can see it's kind of cutting into the couch there, which is not what we want to do. That's because the tolerance is too high. So if you shift the tolerance on, on uh, the background eraser tool, you can go ahead and start erasing a bit more. And as you can see, the center part that, uh, that uh, is where I'm clicking, and then anything outside of the center part gets ignored if it's particularly different from the center color. So you can go ahead and get some nice smooth edges this way, but sometimes you have to play around a little bit to get the tolerance just right. I like to use the polygon lasso tool to get straight edges and stuff, because then you can just go ahead and go around your subject. Oop. Sometimes you make some mistakes. Let's correct that quickly. And then hit delete, and then it's gone. And then you just go in and fix things. So those are a couple of ways you can remove the background. There's also, of course, the eraser tool, the actual eraser tool, and the magic eraser tool. For example, the magic eraser tool just kind of gets rid of what it thinks it should. Obviously, it didn't do a fantastic job there because the tolerance was too high. Still not doing a great job. So these automated tools are usually not the best, which is why I prefer using the polygonal lasso. So just go in and make the selection myself. But the problem comes in generally when you get into hair, because hair, as you can see here, fades into the background a little bit. And so we need the eraser for that, for a nice smooth selection. And to do that, we need to do one other thing besides selecting it. We need to lower the opacity or the flow. Uh, I mean, not the flow, just the opacity. Uh, to something, something a bit lower. So when we start cutting in, we're going to get a brush that's a little bit smaller here. When we start cutting in, it doesn't completely erase the area we're getting into. And this is good because we want to blend the hair in with the background because it's kind of fuzzy and and semi-transparent as it is, so I'm just doing a lot of clicking here until we get rid of the... we definitely don't want any of that because that's the, the wall there. But the top of the head needs to blend in more with the sky. And if you erase a little bit at a time, then you get this kind of textured opacity that blends in well with the background, so you don't have like this really rough edge that doesn't blend very well. Because hair is in a solid object. Now that's not perfect, but you're getting the idea. I'm just going to go here and cut the rest of this out. Okay, so now that we got the background taken care of, what we really need to do here is start to match this color. Look how much duller the color is here than it is on the beach. Now obviously I'm not going to be realistically floating in a couch on a beach, but 
you know, we want to make this as real as possible. And I can bump up the saturation to kind of match this, which definitely helps. And I'm doing that by selecting adjustments, hue and saturation, and just pulling up the saturation. You don't want to do it too much because it looks bizarre then. But, you know, like 10 points should be pretty sufficient. Now we're already starting to look a little bit closer to the color in the photo. But another thing you can do is use an adjustment called Match Color. And you just choose the source, your current document. For us, it's Untitled 1. And then we want to match it to Layer 1, which is where the beach is. Obviously, that's a little much there. Um, so we want to fade it, but um, you want to kind of play around with the sliders to try to get exactly what you want. Now, this is what it's coming up with, which isn't so great, but if you fade that out a little bit and you're neutralizing any of the crazy effects that it's providing, you can get a little bit closer. This is completely off, and this is a little bit closer to the light and color on the beach. So it feels a little bit better. Now, the other thing that you want to do here, I'm just going to hold down the command key, you can use the control key on a PC to click our selection here and select it. And what we want to do is choose the inverse of that selection from the select menu. There it is, command shift I. And now we want to alter that selection and refine the edge. Now, right now, the edge of our selection is not bleeding into this area very much, but that's what we want to accomplish here. We want to shift the edge inward. There we go. So it's bleeding into the selection of our photo. And adding a feather helps get it in there more. Okay, so now you can see it's it's getting in that, to that area. So we're going to say OK, and now the selection is covering part of me. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to our, our background layer and choose Copy, and then I'm going to paste it on top of this. Now that doesn't look very good, but if we dial back the opacity and bring it up just a little bit, you can see part of the color of the, of the background bleeding in to the subject here. Now we can erase some of it on the head because we already managed to do that a little bit by uh, cutting out the hair maybe a little bit too much. Um, but you can see that when you have that extra color on there it tends, to it, te it tends to bleed into the color of this photo which is great because that's what happens with real light. The color of the light bleeds into the subject. So there we go. I'm going to adjust that a little bit. You get a little bit of the beach getting added to there. So this isn't by any means a perfect transportation of reality, but those are some basic techniques so you can quickly you know, move one subject to another location. Generally, the thing that you want to do in these sorts of situations is have a photo that, you know, where you can, where you can really match, where, you know, obviously you don't want to be throwing a couch on a beach like this unless it, you know, unless, unless the sources kind of match up. In this case, the perspective makes absolutely no sense. It looks like I'm floating in air at a different angle from the rest of the photo. So, you know, not a, not a great option. But um, when you are transporting your photos to new and exciting places, uh, you just want to think about uh, you want to think about where your subject is and where you're putting your subject so it matches up nicely, and then it will look far more realistic. But you can use these same techniques to achieve those goals.